In this lesson, we'll be looking at properties of medians and altitudes. So first of all, remember that a median is when it's drawn from a corner of the triangle to the midpoint of the other side. That's a median. Now one thing that we'll notice about those medians is that they are always concurrent. So looking here, I have a median. Notice as I move the, the triangle around, it uh, moves with it. And if we draw all three medians in, in our triangle, and as I move that, notice that all three of those medians meet in the same place. Now there's also another property about these medians that's kind of interesting. The other thing that's interesting about these medians is not only that they're concurrent, but the relationship of the lengths of these sides. Basically what this is saying is that if we take this point of concurrency where all of our medians meet, and we look at the full length of one of those medians, that this smaller part will always be thir one third of the whole length. So if this is A to M, that'll be one third of A to M. And, and this part here, A to B, would be two thirds of A to M. So we can use that in a problem like this. Okay, they give us x to a. So we want to be very careful on noticing what they're actually giving us. They're giving us x to a is 8. Our theorem there was saying that if we take x to b, then we could think about uh, this a b as being 1 third, x a being 2 thirds. So really what I'm saying here is that 2 thirds of x b, the whole length, will be equal to x a, which is actually 8. Now we're asked to find x b, so we could use this as our formula here. Since we know what x a is, we could say that 2 thirds x b is equal to 8. We could solve that by multiplying both sides by 3 over 2, which is going to simplify and give us x b equal to 12. Now another way that we could approach this a little more uh, intuitively is that if we know that this side is two-thirds and this side is one-third then this side must be half of that part and so I know that this part is four if I'm looking for x b then I would take eight plus four so it's mostly understanding that aspect of being two-thirds and one-third to get the whole thing we can also look at the altitude the altitude is when we take any point on our triangle we go to the opposite side and we make the perpendicular from that point so with our altitude, we can see that it is always perpendicular to the other side. It's not necessarily going to be in the middle of that side. The only thing that matters is that it's perpendicular. Now we can also draw all three of those uh, altitudes inside of there. And notice that all three of those altitudes meet uh, in the same place, so they are concurrent. Now we can also uh, notice that they might sometimes meet outside of the triangle. So we call this point the orthocenter of our triangle, the place where the altitudes meet. This could happen inside the circle. If it's a right triangle, it could happen on the circle. And if it's an obtuse triangle, it'll happen outside of the circle. In this problem, uh, we're asked to find the coordinates of our orthocenter. So we can see where this red line and blue line are matching. We're looking for the coordinates of this point. Now it's tempting just to look at this. We should get an answer of 2, 4. Uh, but let's look at how we would actually do this if it wasn't so obvious. So let's start with this red line. Notice um, the slope of this. If we're looking for, uh, if this is an altitude here, then we know that it's perpendicular to AC. Now we'll notice then that the slope of AC is equal to zero. So the slope of uh, the line coming down to B, this red line, would be a vertical line. It has an undefined slope. So the equation of a line with an undefined slope would just be x equals 2. Notice that x is always 2. It never changes. Next we'll look at this blue line, which is perpendicular to BC. So if it's perpendicular to BC, we need to first find the slope of BC. Um, and so we're going to look at the coordinates here. C is at the point 6, 3. And B is at the point 2, 7. Now using those coordinates, we can find our slope by subtracting our y's. And then subtracting the x's on the bottom. And that gives us 4 over negative 4, which is negative 1. Now, if we want the slope of the altitude, the blue line, then it would be the negative reciprocal of this, so our slope is 1. The equation of the altitude, then, we're going to use our point-slope form, y minus y1 equals m, which is 1, times x minus x1. Now, we have to know which point we're looking at. 
Now I'm looking for this blue line is passing through A. So that's the only point that I know for sure right now. And so the coordinates of A are at 1, 3. Notice that was given to us. And so we're going to use those points. X is 1, Y is 3. And so this will simplify to Y equals X plus 2. Now we have two lines here, the blue line and the red line, and we want to find where they intersect. So we're going to solve this system of equations. Really all we have to do then is plug x into here. If we know that x is always equal to 2 on the red line, we just plug in 2, we get y equals 4. The problem asks for the coordinates of the orthocenter, so this point, the orthocenter, is at the coordinates x is 2, y is 4. So as a summary, this is just the vocabulary that we've, we've had. Our perpendicular bisectors are going to meet at the circumcenter. Remember, from the circumcenter, we can draw a circle that includes all of those points. The angle bisectors had the in-center. At the in-center, we can draw a circle that touches each side exactly once. The medians, we had the centroid, which had the property that this part will be one-third, and the top part will be two-thirds, and they'll be the same for each median. And then with the altitudes, we have the orthocenter, which doesn't really do anything special.